So I, I fit into Canadian studies because my focus in my research is on Quebec literature and uh, Quebec culture more generally. Uh, so that's why um, my own work uh, sort of fits with both French and um, Canadian studies. And um, so for students who are wondering what on earth Canadian studies is, um, if, if you come to Carleton and you choose Canadian studies as a major, you'll be exploring and trying to understand um, Canada through a more critical perspective. And uh, you'll be looking at Canada through multiple lenses, taking in a little bit of history, a little bit of politics, a little bit of cultural studies. You'll all obviously also learn about Indigenous studies and, and the issues um, relating to uh, settler colonialism. So in looking at Canada, you're not just looking at how uh, great Canada is, but you're also trying to understand Canada um, both for its strengths and, and also for some of its weaknesses and some of its blind spots. So um, so it's it, you're, you're really learning to um, understand what Canada is from numerous perspectives. And um, I think that this is going to be a good time to introduce to you Nicholas, who is a student in Canadian studies and who, from his perspective, will tell you a little bit more um, about what it's like to study Canada within the context of university and within the context of being situated in Ottawa. So hello, Nicholas. Hello, Catherine. How are you? I'm good. And it's so <laughs> nice to chat with you directly and, and um, not just be emailing back and forth. Yes, and it's so nice to be here with everyone. So, Nicholas, I just want to um, actually to get to know you a little bit better, as we, we don't know each other that well. Um, but I would like to ask you, what, what made you choose Carleton? What, why did you come to Carleton? Well, as an Ontario high school student, uh, like many, I applied through UYAC. And um, at the time, I was interested in both political science and sociology. And I knew that I wanted to stay in Ottawa. I was born and raised in Ottawa. And so my decision was really between Carleton U or Ottawa U. And both have great programs in both of those disciplines. And so, but there are really four things that made me choose Carleton. Um, one was that I was able to take a combined honors um, program. So you heard Marta mention that earlier. I'm basically able to do two majors at the same time um, over the course of one degree, over the course of four years. And so that was something that was really interesting to, in, uh, to me because I had interest in, in so many areas that I wanted to study. I also found that Carleton was more accessible. I really liked the open houses. Um, their website, I thought, was one of the best of all the universities looking at applying to the information that they supplied online, um, which means a lot, meant a lot to me as a high school high schooler um, because you don't have a lot of time to run around and do in-person meetings, especially in, in the era, COVID era. And it also is a reflection how the university organizes itself. Um, I love the campus. I thought the campus was amazing. The tunnels are awesome. Um, you go outside, you see trees, you see <laughs> plants, and you might laugh, well, trees and plants, but a lot of university campuses are, you know, in the heart of, of downtown cities. And so being further away from downtown, right on the Rideau Canal, gives you that opportunity to go outside, take a deep breath, uh, and uh, enjoy everything that the campus has to offer. And finally, I'd, Carleton had courses that I was interested in, particular Canadian studies, um, which is what I eventually ended up changing my my uh, my major to. Hopefully, I'll be able to talk about that later. But those were the four reasons, motivations that made me choose Carleton. Um, those are those are great points that you're bringing up um, about doing a, a combined honors, which Marta obviously talked about earlier, and um, and also that the campus is you know just just a really wonderful green place, and um, and that we're so close to the Rideau Canal, whether you go biking or walking or skating and, and those sorts of things. Um, you also mentioned something about changing your major, and and I think that's something just important to highlight is that the the major that you choose when you apply. Uh, isn't necessarily the one that you graduate with and that that's okay. This is something I'm always telling students. It is, it is actually perfectly okay to discover um, that there's something else you'd rather major in than what you thought when you initially applied. I mean, you're applying, uh, you know, in the middle of your grade 12 year and you still don't know about some of the things you'll study. And um, so I think that's a really important point to get across to students that, that you're not locking yourself in now 
um, when you're applying to Carleton with, with the major that you choose? Yeah, I, for sure. I was guilty of thinking that too. Uh, I, even in first year, in high school and in first year, there's a tendency to think that whatever you've selected of your program, whatever you're approved for, that's set in stone. And, yeah. and that's not, not uh, completely accurate. There are some limitations. You can't switch from you know social sciences to doing pure biology or engineering, but there is you can work around as you take courses. Really use first year, take courses. That's why I love Canadian studies so much. Um, it gives you an opportunity to taste something different, and then who knows? Maybe you'll, you'll be like me, and you'll make it a major or or even a minor. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Nicholas, I'm wondering um, if you can tell us about a moment um, over you're in fourth year, so you've had, you know, you're towards the end of your degree, a moment that is particularly memorable for you that you're especially proud of, um, something that's just going to stick with you, you know, 20, 30 years down the line. Yeah, well, um, in the summer of my second year, uh, so last summer, fall 2019, um, I was hired to work for um, a mem. Actually, no, that would be my third year. Actually, <laughs> fall 2019 would be my third year. COVID brain. Um, I was hired to work for uh, mem my member of parliament, my mem local member of parliament here in in Ottawa, to work on Parliament Hill and uh, led his campaign in the in the fall election. And uh, after the election, uh, we had, I, I, you know, I asked him, I said, hey, you know, why, why'd you hire me? <laughs> why would you trust this 19 year old uh, running your election campaign? And he told me that it was because he admired my critical thinking and analytical skills. And he really appreciated my deep knowledge of, of Canada, my deep understanding of Canada and of political institutions. And of course I was so happy. It's like, oh my, oh my gosh, you know, this guy, member of parliament, he's compl complimenting me. And it only hit me later that uh, I realized that it was my degree. It was my studies in political science and in Canadian studies that had taught me those skills. And, and uh, it, I was really proud uh, um, knowing that my education was making a real world difference. Um, and then the, the second thing is probably just the last, um, uh, just a few months ago, I was accepted into uh, a, pr a pathway in Canadian studies, which is called the Accelerated Pathway. And it allows you in your fourth year of your undergrad to take two graduate courses to get a bit of a taste of what a graduate program is like, both in Canadian studies and at Carleton. And, and also to give you a, a, a jump start so that you can actually finish the program sooner. And those courses count towards electives for your bachelor's and for your master's degree. And so that's probably my two proudest uh, moments during my degree, Catherine. Wow, those those are great, Nicholas. Um, very exciting that you got to work for an MP and, and um, I'm thrilled to hear you talk about the, the critical thinking skills that, that you got, which of course is something I think you get in a lot of the degrees that you could take in, in arts and social sciences, but I think especially in Canadian studies. Um, given the interdisciplinary nature of, of the program and um, and the kinds of hard questions that I think you have to, to grapple with in this program. And congratulations on getting into the accelerated pathway, which, as you say, allows you to take some of your fourth year courses to count as both your fourth year and your master's um, and, and uh, gives you that taste. So I do hope you're going to continue with your master's um, <laughs> at Carleton maybe next year. Yeah, <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, I, I, I'm there, might be, there might be a question on that later on. <laughs> um, I'm wondering, though, if we'll, we're, we'll focus on the undergraduate for now. Uh, is there uh, is there any particular course um, that you would say stands out for you? One of your favorite courses or one of the ones where you feel that you've, you know, you really sort of um, learned in a, an especially interesting or different way and, and why? that course would be a favorite course for you? Yeah, so I had I took two courses in first year that are still with me today, and it's called CDNS. So that's the course code 1000, Introduction to Canadian Studies, and a first year seminar that was called Contemporary Controversies in Canadian Studies, uh, Canadian Society, sorry. And recall that at that point, I still was not in Canadian Studies. And the reason these are my favorite courses is these were the courses that actually motivated me uh, to change my major and to pursue Canadian studies. Um, particularly about this course, what I, I enjoyed um, the perspective that I was getting. 
I, it was something completely different than what I was used to in political science and sociology, what I had been learning in high school up until that point. Um, like you mentioned, it's, it gave me more of a critical approach. I was able to look at everyday issues. You know, we think, well, why, why would I study Canada when I'm Canadian? You know, a lot of maybe not everyone, I'm sure that, you know, that's listening or that, that comes to Carleton. A lot, we have a lot of international students, but for the most part, a lot of Canadians. And you think, well, why? Why would I study, you know, something that I already know? And that's the reason why it gives you a better understanding of your place within Canadian society and what that means. Nationalism, debates, identities, just cultural traditions, even political economy, international relations, the list goes on and on. And uh, that really lends to what you're talking about, about it being an interdis interdisciplinary program, which means that if you're interested in, let's say, I don't know, the history of marketing, right? Something <laughs> that you might not think is related to Canadian studies. If you want to learn that in a Canadian context, maybe understand how the government of Canada markets to Canadians mm. and to people around the world. Well, you can do that. You can bring your interests and your talents into the program, into the degree and um, and uh, and make something out of that. And that's what I realized in those two courses. Also, the professors were, were amazing. It's a really, really great uh, faculty. Um, anyone that does decide to pursue Canadian studies, you'll definitely meet uh, Tim DeLeo Brown, Professor Tim, um, who is amazing. And that really um, says something about how we're a small department. And so a lot of a lot of faculties in a university environment, you can have dozens upon dozens of faculty members when we really only have a core handful. And so you'll get to know your professors and peers quite well. That's that's why those are my favorite courses. <laughs> That's great to hear you talk about that and you're just reminding me um, a long time ago of my first year at Carleton and I took a Canadian studies course uh, which I actually still remember now and I, I really loved it and, and uh, so that's we have that in common. Um, so you've already talked a little bit about some of the critical thinking skills that you you've developed. Are there other skills that um, that you think you've developed and honed through your studies uh, at Carleton? Yeah, um, you'll every student will have to take research and analytical classes, st statistics classes. It sounds scary, but it's 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 OK. It's easy, <laughs> um, but that's really useful, especially if you want to go work in federal government. Let's say you want to be a policy analyst. Or you want to work for an N NGO. They really value those skills. Can you take a text, grab something from that um, and, and use it in another work? Um, but personally, I'd say interpersonal skills, being able to cope with challenges. I've really built my self-confidence over the course of the uh, degree and resilience as well, because university education, it's not easy. You know, there are challenges that you, ha you that you face, but uh, there is a lot of support provided to help to help build you as a person. And and I think I've definitely uh, taken advantage of that over the course of the degree. That's great that um, you've mentioned that that confidence um, boost, which is what Martel so mentioned earlier on, and I think that's a really important point. It's not just about the content of what you're studying, but um, I mean, it, you know, the personal growth and um, becoming confident and more sure of yourself are really, really important to acquire as you become independent and look at career options and things like that. Yeah. Um, you've also mentioned you you've mentioned that you're um, in the accelerated pathway, but I'm wondering. Um, if you have some sense of where your degree might take you, um, whether it's graduate school or other opportunities, and, and besides the accelerated pathway, uh, what are maybe some of the steps you're taking to prepare for, for your future? Yeah, so right now because of COVID-19, um, I'm actually decided I'm going to take an additional um, semester of school. So. A lot of people think when you come to university, you have to do it in four years. Uh, a lot of people do, but you don't. And that's the great thing about this particular program and many like it, like we visit French and linguistics and language studies, is there's a little bit of leeway. If you want some extra time, you don't have to take a full course load. Uh, so because I found it a bit challenging, I, I like talking to people in person. Um, mm -hmm. My next steps is actually to, instead of finishing in April, I'm going to finish and graduate in the fall. Uh, that being said, I'd like to try to get a full-time job. I, um, I think I've 
earned a lot of the skills and knowledge required and uh, I'm already starting to put out some feelers uh, in terms of where I'd like to work and I feel very confident that I've been you know given the 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 skills and the knowledge to be able to to pursue a career um, but I'd also like to do uh, an MA as well and so that's the challenge right now that I'm trying to choose of whether or not I'm going to go directly into uh, career into the workforce or if I'm going to stay and do a uh, a master's in Canadian studies. Well, you have lots of time still to figure it out. It's, <laughs> it's not like you have to decide, you know, for tomorrow morning um, and, and uh, a lot of different opportunities will, I'm sure, come your way. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nicholas. It's been really great to talk to you and um, thank you very much for taking time out to do this with me today. Yes, thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Trevor and everyone at Carleton for giving me the opportunity.